This is the second AIM show, so that's Agricultural Machinery and Equipment show we've run. It came about really, we uh, one year lost one of our very successful dairy shows due to blue tongue. So we had to run a dairy show in January without cattle and it worked incredibly well. So I thought there was a gap in the market having seen Lama uh, for the South West, which is a big, you know, in Lama, East of England, big machinery show. So last year, deep breath and put on the first ever machinery show and 2,000 people turned up. So really pleased with this, this is the second event. Uh, we've added on uh, slightly beefier seminars, uh, a careers area for younger people, uh, tractor stripping, and a full program of a, of a demonstration ring. So there's lots here um, mechanically wise for people to come and, and, and visit and glean information. And even to look at agricultural careers moves, we've got the colleges here. Well, Agriculture now is, is quite an inter interesting industry that not only have you got the men and women who are farming the land, growing the crops and growing the, the livestock, but you now need this plethora of other people around you, whether it's your accountant, your vet, um, advice on waste water management, you need this team of people around you. So if you are a young person who wants a career in agriculture, it won't necessarily be farming, it could be one of the associated industries. And looking around at the people here, you've got a lot of young faces, which is good to see. I'm thrilled that we've got students here. At the first show last year, I was slightly concerned, and then spoke to some of the tractor exhibitors here, and they said, no, no, those are the ones who go back home, and they make the decision as to what kit they actually buy. All this machinery now is so more, far more advanced that I think actually a lot of parents are quite happy for son or daughter to you know, gather the information about you know, which tractor they need, GPS, or, and all this information, and they are the ones who make the, make, perhaps make the decision. And also, they're going to be the, the men and women who are buying this machinery in four or five years' time. So it's a, a brave move for the Bath and West to, to do this, uh, but it's now on the calendar, we're going to see more? Yes, this is, this is now on the Bath and West calendar. I have to say, last year there were very, one or two rather anxious faces. And I said, I know, let's run a new show, when all around us other shows were not having such a good time and shows folding around the country. So it was a big gamble, but I'm very lucky here that in the southwest I've got a hardcore group of exhibitors who will support us and will give us a chance to run an event. If I get it wrong, they will tell me I've got it wrong, but at the moment they all seem quite happy. So it reinforces your regional position, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, um, when the Royal Show began to sort of look like that it was coming to an end, I could see there would be a clear segmentation in the United Kingdom. Royal Welsh, they deal with Wales. Royal Highland, take Scotland. Great, uh, Great Yorkshire, take the north of England. And someone had to sort of take southern England and southwest and south Wales. And so um, that's what we intend to do. There are three main... Uh, agricultural events, AIMS, Royal Bath and Western Dairy Show, cover that. And every third year, of course, we'll have that huge grassland event here, which will be next May, here just adjacent to the showground. You're, you're kind of a centre of excellence for making an exhibition of yourself. Well, I, I'm not sure about all these catchphrases, centre of excellence. Uh, we're just a uh, show organiser who understand our clients and put on the shows they actually want. Alan, that's, that's magical. Thank you.